Hi everyone, welcome to Tony Fox Tarot. Thanks for joining me today. Great to have you with me. Today is a yes or no answer to whatever question you have to ask Tarot. And we'll do the reading by giving you the short answer first, and then we'll have a in-depth look at what's going on in order to give you some backfill on the reasoning for that particular outcome. Now, before we get started, if you would like to go down below and hit subscribe, Tap on the bell icon while you're there, that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Please like and share this video where you can. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is that you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Now, before you're on the screen, we've got five different cards, and the idea is to choose a card that resonates with you most clearly and that will be your reading it's perfectly fine to choose more than one card if it comes to you really strongly and just remember this is a general reading so take away what resonates and leave behind anything that doesn't we've got card number one card two card three card four and card five to get you in the mood to make a choice of your card a quick guided meditation taking in a single nice deep breath And as you release the breath, just letting go of any tension that you might be holding from within. Clearing the mind and focusing in on the cards before you on the screen. Which of these cards has the strongest resonance for you? Is it card one, card two, card three, card four, or card five? Down below, there are five different timestamps representing each of the different cards. If you would like to go to the card that you chose, I'll see you in a moment. Hi everyone, welcome to card number one. So this is your reading and today is a yes, no answer to whatever question you are going to ask. Now, today I'm saying a definite no and we are ready to go with the cards on the table. So let's jump into it. And I'm drawn up to here with the chariot and interference, the eight of swords. And I feel, I feel like you've been pushing towards something that's really, important to you in terms of wanting to succeed um i think you've thrown everything at it in many ways you've certainly made up your mind about what it is that you've wanted and you know in, in some ways i think you, you haven't really been prepared to take no for an answer i think you know you've pushed ahead at all costs in terms of just really wanting to um get the outcome that really is sort of in your favor or or at least about what it is that you want. Um, so there's definitely been a real, a really hard push there. You know, it's quite driven to, to, to sort of get to where you want to be. I feel that you're the type of person that in some ways, um, you know, you don't take any prisoners. You know, once you've made your mind up about something, you know, there's just, there's no, there's no real sort of talking you out of it. I think you could be quite inflexible on that though. And I think there's a lot of pluses in that because you certainly um, have that determination to, to, to get an outcome that really is um, in line with what your wishes are. You know, so there's a very strong willpower force that, you know, your energy is very focused. You are very clear in terms of your process of just pushing ahead at all costs. I think that the difficulty is that sometimes, sometimes either you're not maybe sort of taking into consideration other factors that may get in your way, or also maybe about the other, the, the wishes of, of, of another person, um, if, if it involves people. I, and I do feel that that there has, has been somebody or something that has actually stopped you from getting to where you want to, 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 to be in terms of this outcome. And perhaps perhaps you, you, you even feel that you've been taken advantage of in some ways, you know, that you've been manipulated um, or... or strategically undermined in a way where you, you know you've fallen very short of of getting the outcome that you've wanted 
you know, maybe somebody or something hasn't been playing ball with you here in order to get behind you to, 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 to be on board with what it is that you're really wanting. I think that that causes a lot of a lot of problems because, you know, there, it, it, it causes you also to become quite defensive. It's like if you're not going to play my, my play it my way, if you're not going to get on board with what I'm looking to, to achieve here, which is really to be successful in my outcome, then I'm going to I'm going to sort of block you or, or push you, push you away, I think is probably what it's more about. Um, or, or is it, you know, may, 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 and may, maybe there's a bit of a, a dummy spit here as well. Um, if I'm not going to get what I want, then I'm not going to play this game anymore. Um, I, I kind of do feel that there is hurt here behind a facade of, 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 very, of a very strong person. Um, you know, it kind of creates a defensiveness, really, um, which, is re which is really just a, a sort of like a an armory to, 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 to stop yourself from being, becoming hurt. If I come over here to the Emperor and the Queen of Swords, I think there's a, a lot of self-reflection at this time in terms of what's been going on. Um, I think that you feel quite defeated, um, that you haven't succeeded in getting to where you wanted to be. And I think this has really cut you quite, quite to the core. I think you've taken this very personally. I think it's hurt you in a way where you feel that, um, you know, being vulnerable is not an option, you know. So so a part, a part of you recognises what's happened, but another part of you doesn't want to actually go there in terms of the, the sort of full processing of what that actually really means. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, vul being vulnerable is just not an option, I don't feel, for you. You know, the chariot is a really driven card. You know, it's it's all about success, wanting to reach goals, has utter determination to, 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 to achieve them. And it's really about, you know, achieving success. So it's a driven card. The willpower behind that, that card, you know, forces you along a journey that really is very empowered. However, it's coupled with interference, the Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is, is, is really when things are taken out of your hands and, you know, you lose your power so there's a real there's a real tension there a conflict you know and and often the eight of swords you know involves somebody else or something else that actually manipulates you or 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 or, or, or at the very least um you, you know gets in your way from achieving you know a, a, an outcome where you are free to, to 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 be the person that you want to be and also to achieve what it is you want to be. So I kind of feel that this is where things have been going. And if we come over here to the Emperor and the Queen of Swords, you know, the Emperor, once again, it's an ambitious card, very strong energy, very much like the Chariot. It really wants to succeed, but it really wants to also be in control. Um, and it's coupled with the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is a card um, of, 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 of defensiveness, but it's, a, it's, it's very much a card of pain and realizing that it can't achieve everything that it wants to achieve um and 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 so there and 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 therefore you know there there is a, a, de a high degree of vulnerability with with the queen of swords um you know the queen of swords knows conflict and you know is 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 to some degree in acceptance of 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 failure um but it's paired with the emperor and the emperor is 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 driving a very strong energy that still wants to reach the top. So even though you're not getting to where you want to be and you're realizing that perhaps there is a degree of failure here, you know, it's, it's like your defense mechanisms won't let you back, back down in a way where you accept that maybe that this is not all up to you. Maybe this isn't, and maybe it isn't all about you. Um, maybe it's also about somebody or something else that doesn't want the same thing. And so there, and, and so therefore, um, you know, you need to kind of accept, you know, what the shortcomings are here. And if we come down here to the star and princess of swords, you know, the star is all about our hopes and our aspirations. Um, it's, it's about realizing dreams, realizing goals. It really pairs back in with the chariot and the emperor, you know, driving towards what it is that you want. And I think, you know, you are such a focused person. You're a very intelligent in individual. I think, I think that you, you know, the, the princess of swords is a, is, is a card of questioning and intellect and analysis. It really looks at a lot of 
detail. It, it, it turns every stone in order to understand how things work. But it's a card of the past, just like the Queen of Swords is a card of the past. And if you're looking back to the card of the pa cards of the past, here with the chariot in interference, you know, some, this thing that's gotten in your way, you know, I think this is problematic for you in, in as much as that you need to resolve why it is that you're not achieving, you know, these results. Why it is that you're not achieving the goals that you really want to succeed in, in this particular case. And, you know, because it, it's, it's, it's really starting to gnaw away at your self-confidence. The Princess of Swords is a card that really questions things, but also questions itself. And it can really overshoot that mark by beginning to doubt itself, you know, and therefore it sort of spirals back in on, on self-doubt and self-analysis in a way that, that can become really undermining. And I think it's important to realise that what you're seeing here in this particular situation, it's, 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 it's just, well, not to some degree, it's to every degree. It's, this, this is actually out of your control. You know, you don't have control over this situation. You can't get what you want here because whatever it is that you're trying to achieve is not playing ball with you in a way where it wants to achieve the same results. In fact, it's pushing against you. Yeah, and interference is exactly that. It's a card that pushes back against us. It doesn't want us to succeed. It wants to control us. It wants to take our power away. It wants to tie our hands behind our back. So no matter how hard you push, you, you know you can't get that result. And even though even though you're reflecting on on that at this point in time, there's still a, a degree of of I guess denial where where, where you won't accept no no for an answer i think this is the thing and, and it really ties in with your driven nature you know because you're so determined and you've got a lot of fire you know the the, the, the emperor is, is 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 a it's it's a um a warrior card you know it, it, it flags war <laughs> it's, it's driven by aries it's it's all guns blazing it's not it's red for a reason, you know, like it sees a flag and it knows it knows to fight against it. And the chariot is is really behind that in terms of driving, driving, driving to get what it wants. But the thing is, whatever or whoever it is that you're trying to succeed to get, you know, is not playing ball. In fact, they're playing the opposite. They're playing strategies. They're playing games. And... You know, I think this is where it brings you back over here to the Star and Princess of Swords, you know, because you're, you're kind of looking back at this, this, this in a way where you're trying to understand where you're going wrong, how you can get it, how you can get what you want. You know, the Princess of Swords is thinking, how do I get what I want? He's with the Star. The Star is about our hopes and dreams and aspirations. You still want what you've, you, you failed to get. But the thing is, is that at some point you're going to have to realise that you are vulnerable that you, you know, you, you, you can't just get what you want because you make your mind up and won't take no for an answer. You know, sometimes if another person or a situation is blocking us, it's a no-go. It's a, And it's a no-go for a reason. It's because there's a lot of conflict involved with this. And the interference card is all about conflict, pushing up against you in a way that is playing games with you you know, fencing you off in a way where you are feeling that your power is being taken, taken away from you. And, you know, and that is actually succeeding in this particular reading. And for me, it's about letting it go. Yeah. Letting go what it is that you're wanting, accepting that there is a fight against you that is not stronger than, than you, but that is not going to allow you in to achieve this particular result. It's time to focus on other things that are in line with your power to achieve them, yeah? So for me, it's about letting go of the past and moving forward into the future in a way where you realign yourself to new goals, to new ambitions, yeah, to new achievements. I hope this reading has made some sense to you, and if it has, please feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Just on a final note, 
I release videos each and every week to YouTube, so feel free to browse the ones that I've already posted and keep an eye out for those that are up and coming. Thank you very much. Take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number two. This is your reading and we are looking at a yes, no outcome here in terms of the answer to whatever question that you're asking. And I definitely get a yes with this particular uh, reading. So the answer is yes. Let's backfill that in a way that gives you some context as to what's going on. And if I start over here with the Tower and the Queen of Cups and I'm looking to the past and I feel that um, Circumstantially, things have been very challenging for you. I think you've certainly come up against, uh, well, it's more than an obstacle. I think I think things have been untenable. You know, the, the, I, I kind of feel that the foundation for something that you feel very loving towards has um, been very unstable. Maybe it's even decayed to a point of, of, of questioning uh, whether it can actually be uh, rebuilt in, in a way that um, gives it integrity. Integrity for me is really what this is all about. You know, the, the tower is a card of stability or instability is more to the point. You know, when the lightning strikes the tower and the tower crumbles, it, it, it crumbles because the integrity or, or, or the foundation is flawed. Um, and, and so, you know, in, 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 in essence, it's really about revealing the truth of what's going on. And I think that that has really focused you in on everything that's been going wrong. Um, but, you know, you are a really loving, compassionate, um, giving person, you know? I, 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 you, you have this strong sensitivity, uh, very healing energy, you know, you really know how to bring things back to life when it comes to people, but also to situations. You know, there's there's something uh, very strongly um, intuitive here, um, and I think that you've been very forgiving about this situation. I think most people would have looked on and said, "What are you doing? Are you crazy? You know, this is you know this is not um, a, you know a situation that you should be be involved in. Get out, you know, run for the hills." But that's not how you felt. You know, you haven't rationalized this in any way. You've certainly stayed true to your heart. You know, you've really gone with how you feel here and your feelings have said, no, I, 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 I feel that this can be rebuilt. Um, I feel that there is something here that, that I can work with in a way that can bring this back to life. I think you've been very patient about what's going on. You know, the Queen of Cups is a card of love and compassion and an and, and enormous sensitivity. It's, it's one of the strongest feeling cards, but it's a very nurturing card. There's a lot of love there. Often it can mean, you know, love and healing, but, you know, commonly it's about matters of the heart in terms of, you know, your love for another person. The Tower is certainly about, you know, situations or circumstances that are unstable. Uh, where a truth has been revealed um, and when things come crumbling down around our ears circumstantially. So, you know, this could be about a relationship, it could, but it also could be a situation or, you know, an opportunity. You know, for me, just to keep it really broad is very important. Um, moving on over here to adjustment and the night of disc. And I think that you've actually succeeded in putting things back on track. I think things have moved forwards in a way where, you know, it's almost like this has been rebuilt. You know, the structure uh, and integrity has, has has actually been addressed. I think things have become very unreliable. I feel like, you know, trust is reinstalled in a way where, you know, you're not questioning whether this is going to crumble, whether there's a weakness here. And I think over time, you know, things have really shown, you know, their, their, their true colours. It's like, oh, okay, so this actually is you know, there are bright days ahead, you know, in terms of, of, of this moving forward. You know, we, we, we are gathering momentum. We are pushing forward. Things are reliable. You know, Knight of Discs is a card of stability and structure and reliability. But it's also a card um, that kind of really points to routine, you know, um, predictability, dependability. And it's also investment over a long period of time to get a reward. 
So it's not about getting that today. So there is a, you know, for me, I kind of feel how it is that you have felt, which is very loving, very passionate. Um, and, and, you know, I kind of feel it's kind of come from a very dynamic base, you know, in terms of what you've really felt love towards. Now things feel just a little bit too, mm, a little bit too predictable, a little bit too, um, I guess, uh, I, I want to say boring in a way, you know, and, and I think maybe the passion for me is missing. There's the, the, dyna the dynamic nature of interaction with what you've been focusing in seems to be missing. It's all become just a little bit, uh, uh, just a little bit uh, too comfortable, actually. And adjustment is a card that really is about balancing things, trying to understand, you know, things in perspective. You know, you're looking to the past, you're looking to the present, and you're trying to figure out what's going on uh, as a consequence of many different factors that produce evidence to make a decision about moving forward. In, in some ways, it's about learning from mistakes, but learning from mistakes from your past, but also learning from mistakes about what's going on around you now. And I feel that you're questioning, you know, is this gathering enough speed? You know, will this actually become more dynamic? Or is it going to kind of stay in this, this kind of like slow to burn kind of situation where Everything is stable and promising, but at the same time, not as rewarding as I, I possibly would have hoped for. For me, the, the, the answer to this is, is, is really down here with the Fool and Seven of Wands. I feel that you've been really all over what's going on here. You've put a lot of yourself into this. You've been very personally invested in what's going on. And it's based on your heartfelt feelings. And even now, you know, like pushing things forwards and trying to get an understanding as, as to whether it's going, you know, going in the right direction. You know, it's very much about you making decisions to kind of kind of give it the push, to give it the momentum that it needs to build to where it is that you'd like it to be. It's time to let all of that go. This needs to find its natural balance. It needs to be an, an, an organic process. Your passion arises from 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 inspiration. OK. And there is no room at the moment for that. Everything's too confined and too ordered, too structured, too predictable. And it becomes boring, too comfortable. The Fool is a card of new beginnings. And I feel that this is entering into a new beginning. Um, the Fool is all about dynamic force. It's a very inspirational card because it acts in the moment. Nothing restricts the Fool. It doesn't want to be weighed down by responsibility. It doesn't want to be weighed down by anything that will stop it from just being in the moment. And being in the moment is what it's all about. It's acting on inspiration. It fills the spiritual energy. It is passionate. It's a very passionate card that travels a road less, less traveled. Um, it's coupled with the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is a card that is all about making transitions from one situation to another. Um, it's about building momentum, building energy in a way where things gather steam uh, without interference. Um, you know, finding a natural flow, allowing things to build momentum. Uh, I, you know, a combination of these two cards, for me, it's really about letting things go. I feel like you've been too heavily invested in what's going on and it's getting in the way of the natural flow or the natural order of how this is supposed to unfold. Let go of all the drama. Stop thinking about what it is that's happened. How it is it you're supposed to tweak it to make it a success? Let things find a natural balance. Think about yourself for once. Stop thinking about the situation. What are your needs here? You need passion. You need to feel the spark. So be in the moment. Keep it light. Keep it fresh. Let go of all the drama. Don't be so heavily invested. So I, I feel that this is heading in the direct, right direction. For me, this is a definite yes. You know, you've gotten this over a hurdle, you've put a lot of yourself into it, you've resuscitated it, you've brought it back to life. Things are, the integrity is now unquestionable, but now it's just time to let it go and to let things unfold and to, to have a life of its own, really. You know, you don't need to be over, all over this anymore. New beginnings, act out of inspiration, be in the moment, go with the flow. This is going to make a transition. This is a new beginning. It's going to make a transition into a new phase that will give this a completely um, undefined uh, new beginning. You know, nothing like you've known before. It's time to trust. Go with the flow. Have faith in spirit.
Yeah, you've done all you needed to do. And now you just need to let this gather the momentum, build speed and surprise you with a very, a very passionate reward. And that for me really is what this is all about because I kind of feel that you are not getting a reward. You know, you're not getting what you deserve out of this because you've been too heavily invested in it. So let this begin to speak to you in a way where it meets you and recognizes your efforts and gives you the rewards that you deserve. I hope this reading has made some sense. And if it has, please feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Uh, like and share this video where you can. Um, subscribe and tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Uh, if you're interested in the services that I offer as a, as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. And I release videos each and every week to YouTube, so feel free to browse the ones that have already been posted and keep an eye out for those that are up and coming. Thank you and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number three. This is your reading and today we're looking at a yes, no answer to your question. And today I've got a no to this question. Coming up here to the Hangman of the Knight of Discs, and I feel that you have been really holding out for a pathway, you know, or a set of circumstances, um, or an opportunity perhaps that gives you, you know, uh, reliability, honesty, and integrity. Um, I, I think you've been holding out for that for a really long time. Um, my sense is, is that you're the type of person that often will make sacrifices that, you know, you, you know, you end up overextending yourself in a way where you're just getting too much. Um, and, you know, it, it, it comes back to bite you because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's really about you and what you're giving to the situation that underpins um, the strength and integrity of its ability to succeed. Um, I think you're a very thorough person in terms of your nature. I think you really look at things you know, in, in a very methodical way. You really think things through and you take your time about um, anything that you engage with, whether it's people, opportunities, relationships, um, your work, especially with your work. I think that you're very, I get a sense that you're a very creative person, actually. Um, the Hangman is definitely a, a, a card of, 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 of artists. Um, it connects to the poets and, you know, inspiration around creativity. It's a very self-reflective card. Um, it's, it's really very introspective in terms of trying to understand things from a different perspective. So, you know, it really indicates this moment of, of, of sort of, 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 of pulling back, of stopping and, you know, trying to figure things out from a different angle in a way where you're self-preserving and going inwardly to understand what's going on. Um, sometimes, you know, with the hangman, you have to make sacrifices in order to get what it is that you want. But I think this is where I feel that you... I get a sense that you're just very tired of that, tired of, of, of making sacrifices, of giving too much. The Knight of Discs is a card of stability and security. It's about reliability and integrity. It's a very honest card, very down-to-earth card. You really know where you stand with the Knight of Discs. And I think for you, you know, I get, I get a strong sense of, of, of longing for stability, longing for honesty, holding out for that. Um not wanting to give so much to make everything work, you know, um, wanting to, t I think also wanting, just wanting to take your time about things. I don't, you know, you're not, you're not in a rush. It's like, let's just see where this is going. Let's take our time. Um, let's explore this in a, in an honest way. And, and, I, and, and, and when I say that, it's like, let's keep the integrity of what's going on, you know, really at the forefront. Um, so for me, it's, that's that's very low risk, but I think that that's also very honest. If I come over here to the Fortune and Knight of Wands, I feel that something has landed in your lap. You know, it's an opportunity that's kind of swept you off your feet. I feel this is something that is really... It has this potential to reach 
quite great heights. Very, very creative energy here. Lots of, lots of, and, and, and really burning very brightly. I kind of feel like this is a here now thing. It's like, whoa, this, you know, you, you're going with this or it's going without you. Um, very passionate, very dynamic. It's, yeah, for me, I kind of feel there's a lot of creative force, a lot of creative energy in what's going on here in a way that says, you know, you know, the moment beckons, you know, the energy is rising. It's, it's kind of like a moth to a flame, though. It's like, you know, you're really dazzled by, by this. I think it's a very attractive um, set of circumstances, a very attractive opportunity. You know, the Knight of Wands is an opportunity that becomes mobilized and it has great lift. It's really going places. can often mean travel can also mean work taking off, um, but it can be anything, keeping this really loose. It can be any kind of opportunity that really craps, it captures your creative en energy. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of sexual energy in, in, in the Knight of Wands as well. It's a very fiery card. It's a very forceful card, um, but it's coupled with the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune is also about risk and, and, and gambling things. It's about um, throwing the dice and seeing where things go. So this is this, this involves fate and destiny, you know. And and you know, fate has offered you something that can change the direction of your life. You know, I I, I kind of feel this could really take you up and away, and 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 and, and this could go in a, a very different direction that you never really anticipated. Uh, I don't think you can really prepare yourself for this. You know, you're on, you're on board and you're engaging in, in, a, in a very passionate, creative way, or you're not at all because it's too risky. Um, I feel the thing about speed and force for me is very is, is, is very prominent here. I kind of feel like this is very, once again, this is very here now. It's, it's beckoning you to go now. It, it, it feels to me like this will leave if you don't go with it now. It, but if you do go with it, it's going places. It'll take you into new experiences that give you um, a very different perspective on what's going on. I think there's a lot of reward in this. Um, it feels passionate. And I think that it would be very stimulating in a way where you would learn an enormous amount of it. But I, for me, I kind of feel like you'd end up in a very different place as a consequence. You know? So where you are now and everything you've been striving for up to this particular point, that completely changes. There's a new game plan. It's like, well, we're going somewhere else, doing something else, according to a completely different new set of rules that I had never considered before. Um, I think the thing for this, for me, with this opportunity, it's like you're going with the flow and you're on board with it. And I, I think I've already said this, or you're not at all. So I kind of feel a lot of positives about that. Um, but, I, but I have a lot of concerns as well. And if I come down here to the Princess of Cups and the Lovers, you know, this is a, it's a, it's a decision making time for you. You know, this is an opportunity that has a high degree of risk and it really calls on you to access your true feelings. How do you really feel about this? At the moment, I think you're dazzled by what's going on. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, a lot of razzle dazzle. Like it's, it's kind of feel, I kind of feel a bit enamored by this. You know, part of me wants to go along with it. But another part of me is saying, oh, hang, hang on a second, how do I really feel about this? Um, you know, it's all very well being taken, you know, be, being taken by what's on offer. But at the same time, it doesn't offer, it, it doesn't offer any stability. It's the complete opposite of everything that you've been working towards. It's the complete opposite to everything that you've actually been holding true in terms of what you've wanted, what you've actually been holding out for. Um, I, 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 I get a sense that for me, it's a no, because at the end of the day, I sense that this will trip you up. You know, it's, 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 it's all very well to f feel the attractive nature of what's going on, but there is such a high degree of risk in terms of the uncertainty as to where it will actually take you. And I think it will be really w rewarding, but I think it goes against the grain of who it is that you are and what it is that you want in terms of integrity and structure, and most importantly, honesty. You know, coming back over here to the hangman and the knight of discs, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's all about holding out for something that is measurable, something that is true and honest and grounded and which doesn't mess you about in a way where you've kind of left with egg on your face and that you you aren't tripped up 
you know, in a way where you've overextended yourself. I kind of feel that you'll get involved with this particular opportunity and that it will absorb you, um, but it will also really stretch you in a way where it goes against your innate characteristics, really. You know, the Princess of Cups is a card of opportunity, um, but it's a very, it's a, it's a very immature opportunity. You know, it really flirts with us. It's very attractive, um, but it doesn't have depth, you know, because the Princess of Cups is very young in terms of what it is that it has to offer. Um, it's coupled with the Lovers, and the Lovers is a card, it can be about intimacy and relationships in terms of loving relationships. It's also a card of choices. You know, it's about making choices about creative opportunities that relate to what we've actually identified here. But for me, you know, once again, this reinforces the idea of, of something that's a bit unreliable, that is not in line with something that is much more grounded and, you know, um, reliable and honest as far as um, an opportunity that can be much more measurable and that will also last the distance over time. For me, I feel this, this is an opportunity that will burn brightly. It would be very re rewarding, but I think that would also it will also die out quite quickly, you know? And, and for me, I think you're looking for something that's sustainable long-term and which has a reward over time. So it's a no for me. Um, hold out for what's really true to you. And I think you've been doing that for a long time. And I think that you have to have belief in what it is that you're doing. You know, you need to project forward and stay true to what is most important to you. Honesty always wins, that's the point. Integrity and honesty, you know, hold out for that. Keep keep that structure alive within yourself and the moth to your flame will be attracted to you in terms of an, an opportunity that will actually balance you in a way that gives you the fulfillment that you're looking for. Hope this reading has made some sense and if it has, please feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Uh, subscribe, tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Uh, if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. And just on a final note, I release videos each and every week to YouTube, so feel free to browse the ones that I've already posted and keep an eye out for those on the horizon. Thanks very much and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number four. This is your reading and today we have a yes, no answer to whatever question you're going to be asking. And for me, this is a yes, sir, that's a no. Uh, and, I, and I really need to go through the reading, to be honest with you, to actually give you context as to why I've come to that particular conclusion. I feel over here to the priestess and Ace of Swords, I feel like, you know, if you had this moment of clarity where you decided to act on it. Um, I kind of feel like you've taken your power back in a way that has given you the ability to make decisive action, yeah? You know, like, you haven't messed about with what's going on here. I, I, I feel you've, you've made a decision to move on. It's about a new beginning for you. And I think you've done that in a really concise way. It's been very black and white in some ways. But your process has been very clear and perhaps, you know, this has come to you in a moment, like a flash moment where it's like you can just see straight through everything. And so anything that might have seemed a bit uncertain before this particular point has kind of just really just fallen away. And what you've been left with is a, is, is, is a clear picture of what you need to do in terms of moving forward into the future. I, I kind of feel there's a lot of power in this. Um, it's, it's a very liberated moment of clarity where you're kind of free from everything that's been pulling you back in terms of uncertainty. No more confusion in the picture. And, and, and really, I think it's allowed everything to kind of fall into really clear perspective. And for me, it, it, it's all about moving forward in that kind of line of vision that just says, look, I know what I'm doing here. You know, like I don't have to mess about anymore. I'm, 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 I'm back in the driving seat. I feel like I'm in control of what it is that I'm doing. I feel good, you know, like, you know, and, and I think mental health comes up really strongly strongly for me in this particular um, view. I kind of feel that all of a sudden everything that was fogging you up and pulling you down and kind of pushing you around in a way 
has just completely fallen out of the picture in a way where what you've been left with is just pure clarity. And it's like everything just has just lifted up into this um, clear and light, but very motivated um, perspective of what it is that you need to do and how it is that you need to move forward. The Priestess is a card of the future. You know, and, and, and the priestess can be very uncertain in terms of what the future holds. You know, it's a bit of a murky card because we don't always know what's up ahead in the future. We might get a sense of it. So there's a lot of intuition in the priestess. The Ace of Swords is a card of new beginnings. It's about conflict, but it's about cutting away from conflict. It's about leaving conflict behind. Um, it's about, uh, uh, you know, like a moment of clarity in terms of your your, your vision, of your process, in terms of, of, of thinking things through. So it's about ideas, but it's also about acting on them. And I feel that you have moved forward and acted upon this moment of clarity in a way where you've taken control back of your life. And it's actually sliced through any uncertainty that you've had about where you're moving into the future. Coming down here to the Chariot and the Princess of Swords, I feel that things have faltered to some degree you know, at this point in time. I think you've started to rethink it. Um, I think you're thinking about what you've left behind and you're questioning it in a way where you're starting to turn it upside down to look at it from different angles. You've got questions that have now come up for you as to lead you to think, oh, you know, like, actually, did I make the right decision? Am I really certain? And most importantly, you know, well, am, am I, was I right? You know, did I, did I, and have I done the wrong things? There's a lot of self-doubt there. I mean, the, the Princess of Swords is a card that reflects on opportunity from the past, you know, but it questions everything. And it tends to analyze in a really microscopic kind of way so it really gets down into, into the nitty-gritty it's less about the broad big picture it's more about the detail of what has been left behind and I think the thing for me about the Princess of Swords is a very articulate card it really does think things through in a very um, thorough way but at the same time, it can kind of overshoot things. It can think too much, which can lead to self-doubt. And it um, can really undermine itself, you know, in terms of confidence. Now, the charity is a card of, of, of focus. And it's, there's a lot of drive in the chariot. There's a, there's a lot of power coming up from behind it because it's about willpower. It's about pushing forward towards success. It's all around the idea of when we make it, make our mind up to succeed, um, there's, there's nothing that stops us because we basically, um, we're, we're going to push ourselves to achieve that result no matter what. Now that's powering the Princess of Swords in a way that really gives this quite an aggravated sense of self-doubt. You know, so, so, so there's a sense of, of, of kind of thinking, well, you know, may, may, maybe maybe I should change my mind. Maybe if I go back to what it is that I left behind, the thing that I now doubt, maybe I can make a success of that because perhaps I got that wrong. So you've kind of gone from this moment of absolute clarity, which is absolutely pure vision about what it is you need to do, a moment of clarity and a, a moment of truth to slice through any uncertainty. Now you've kind of stopped at this point thinking, oh gosh, maybe I got that really wrong. Perhaps I should go back and focus on that in a way that can fix it. Maybe I got it, maybe, maybe I got it all wrong. What is it that you're talking about here? What is it that we're talking about here? If we go back to the to the beginning, we come over here to the universe and the seven of cups, this is where it's all started. I think there's been an opportunity or a situation, a set of circumstances that have had enormous promise in terms of the potential to realize something that is really fulfilling. Um, and I think this has actually been something very special for you in terms of what it is that you've actually wanted to achieve. Uh, you know, the, the universe is a card of enormous success and fulfillment. Um, it, it, it really is... Is, is, is at the top of the apex in terms of, 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 reaching, of, of reaching success. You know, it's what we're all striving towards in terms of the balance of happiness and fulfillment. And it embodies, you know, um, you know the, the, the end point in terms of really trying to find everything that matters in life, you know, and that can apply to a lot of different things. You know, it, it really depends. It could be a relationship. 
it could be a job, it could be anything from a set of circumstances to your values, it, it really doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it's coupled with debauch, uh, which is the Seven of Cups. And I feel that it's like you've seen something that has this enormous potential to, to reach great heights. Um, but it's almost like it's it's just been it's 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 like it's been over you've overdone it like you've had too much of a good thing, and it's kind of spoiled the situation in a way that has left a lot of uncertainty, a lot of mixed feelings as to whether this is really succeeding, whether it's really going in the right direction. I think even though you've seen enormous potential in this, you've also felt that perhaps that it's actually reached a point that's actually been really unhealthy for you. Um, and it's really stirred the pot, the, the pot in terms of how you feel about the situation. And I think because there's been a lack of resolution to, to, to kind of get to this, this, this point of fulfillment, even though you can see it, you know, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can reach it, you can always touch it, but you can't actually fulfill it in a way where it lives up to the, to, to, to the potential. And so you, you have a, a situation that has been spoilt to some degree. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, for me, I, it's, it's a real strong sense of, of, of having overdone something, too much of a good thing in a way. Um, and I, I think things have gotten to a point for you where, where this lack of clarity around reaching this particular point has begun to sour the whole, the whole experience. And so, you know, you've, you've, you've come to a point where you've, you've really kind of reached this, moment where you've had to think about your future you know you've had to think about what you need to do to take back control and to forge a, a future that really gives you clarity as a whole as opposed to a lot of mixed feelings and perhaps for you the best way to do that was just to really be really very clinical and actually cut it out of the picture in a way that kind of lightened the load and gave you the momentum that you needed to reach a, a, a different a different kind of point um, in, in your world that mapped out your future. So for me, I feel this is a no to going back to the situation, a no to trying to give this another go, a no to your self-doubt, to your self-sabotage about what it is that you were already very clear about. It's a yes to moving forward into your future with clarity. It's a yes to what you've already acted on. If we come over here to the priestess and the ace of swords, uh, sorry, the ace of swords, this is the moment of clarity. This is the moment when you realized the truth, okay? You saw it for what it was. You knew that you were better off without it. And that the way forward was to cut away from it really clinically and to have a new beginning in a way where you took your power back. Going back into this situation will only immerse you back into that murky feeling of uncertainty and a lot of mixed feelings. And that process, just by thinking about it, just by entertaining the idea of going back to it here with the chariot and the and the princess of swords, it already spikes this uncertainty, this doubt. It brings back in the negativity into your world in a way where it begins to weight you down and saturate you with this feeling that things that there's something not quite right. It leads to mistrust of yourself, but it also leads to mistrust of the situation because you can't see clearly through it. And you can't see clearly through it because it's a murky situation that doesn't have clarity, yeah? The truth is in moving on. It's, it's So for me, it's a yes to moving on and it's a no to going back. I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, please feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Uh, subscribe, tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. If you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about me, what it is that I do and who it is that I am. And um, just on a final note, I release videos each and every week to YouTube, so feel free to browse the ones that are already posted and keep an eye out for those that are up and coming. Take care and thanks very much. Hi everyone, welcome to card number five. This is your reading and today is a yes no answer to your question and... For this particular question, I've got a yes. So that's my answer. Let's jump in and do the reading to figure out the context of what's going on here. And I, I want to start, start over here with the Devil and Defeat, which is the Five of Swords. And I feel 
I feel like you've been under a lot of pressure by somebody or something. Um, yeah, this could be circumstances, you know, like it could be something that's happened to you. Uh, but it feels very pointed. Uh, it feels like somebody's really tried to actively get to you in a way that's undermining you. You know, like it's stopping you from succeeding or stopping you from getting to where you want to be, actively undermining you, but also really inflicting some sort of very pointed nastiness. You know, like I, I kind of feel like there's a lot of wrongdoing here. This is not a healthy situation. It feels very toxic. Um, I feel this has really crushed you. I think there's been a lot of pain involved. It's like you've been on the on, on the sharp end of it. You know, you've you've suffered a lot as a consequence. It's been incredibly disruptive. I think this has been, you know, like enormously impactful on your life. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's almost like it's blown up in your face a little bit. And that's caused a lot of dust to kind of, you know, kick up in the air. And it's been very hard to sort of get clear about what's going on, you know, like, and, and, and I, I felt that this was really perpetual, you know, like it's, whoever's perpetuating it, it's just like they're constantly at it. Whoever or whatever it is, it might not be a person, it could be a situation, um, I want to keep this pretty general. You know, it's it's really about the essence of what I'm feeling here. I feel I think that this has been a very lonely experience, and I, I, I my sense was that it it kind of felt like you'd been brought to the brink of 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 a sort of you know scenario of, of really you know, this has really tested your faith, and I think there's been times where you thought, God, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Feels very nasty, very pointed, very upsetting, and it's it's almost like it's been stacked against you. The odds have been stacked against you in a way that have been manipulated, and I think that's what I find about this. That's a bit sort of unsettling for me. It's like mm, there's, there's just no kind heartedness in here. This is just raw nastiness for gain, either to make make that person or, or, or that situation feel better. You know, so, so it's kind of, it's, it's getting one up over you for the sake of doing it. You know, there, there's no, there's no real sense in it if you have a heart. So it's a heartless situation and it's been very, very disruptive, very challenging. And I think it's, it's made you think, oh God, you know, like life can be pretty crappy. Like it really can serve you up, you know, like a, a bad dose of, of, of badness, really. Coming over here to adjustment and the ace of as uh, the ace of dis, sorry. And I feel that you know where you're at at the moment. It's it's completely changed. I feel like you have recovered from what's going on, and it's a new beginning in many ways. You know, for me, I feel that this also is a time of 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 perspective for you. You know, it's almost like new evidence has come to light in a way that has left you to feel. Maybe, maybe somebody or something needs to pay here. Maybe some sort of reconciliation needs to take place. Maybe I need to be vindicated. Maybe justice needs to, to happen. You know, um, you know, I've recovered. I feel much in, in a much better place. I feel I've got my steam back. I'm, I'm kind of standing on solid ground. I'm able to reflect in a way that you know isn't conflicting according to the speci specifics of, this, of the situation. There's been sufficient distance that really allow me to kind of think about this just, you know, a, a, lot, a lot more strategically, but also, you know, about fairness. So, you know, adjustment is, 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 is around justice and looking at fair and just outcomes according to what's happened. But it's about evidence that's, you know, in front of you and trying to make a decision as to what's going on in relation to that particular evidence. Um, it's about outcomes that um, are, are from learning about our past and our circumstances. It's about drawing, it's also about drawing a line under what happened as well. I kind of feel like a, a line needs to be drawn so that you can move on. And, you know, Ace of, the Ace of Dis is, is, is a card of opportunity. It's about new beginnings, but it's about solid new be beginnings that are very grounded. It's also about money and finance. And I kind of wonder whether for some of you, whether this is a situation that was technical, that it involved justice from a judicial point of view or from a tribunal point of view. You know, this could be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It could, it could be about a court situation or it could be about 
a tribunal of of some sorts in you know like a you know like a, a community setting or, or or a job scenario or you know like if it involved a person and a relationship it could also mean you know uh, bringing this up, you know, with family and friends um, and colleagues that, 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 you know, were able to hear uh, and witness what it is that happened so that you are kind of, you know, letting it out in, 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 into a grounded scenario that's, you know, outside from the conflict within you and what's going on in your mind into the, the light of day. Yeah, but Ace of Discs also, you know, looks looks at the idea of, of reward and getting something um, from from the opportunity that is at hand. And for me, it's about justice as to what it is that's happened in the past. So I kind of feel that there there was there's a, there was a prospect of compensation, and you know, in light of new perspective or new evidence. Um, but, you know, look, to be honest with you, more importantly, it's, for me, it was also about a time to address what it was that happened, you know, um, so that you could have a new beginning to let it all go. Coming back over here to, 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 to the previous cards that we were discussing, you know, the devil is about endings linked to new beginnings. It's difficult situations that are born out of um, the need for truth. Um, and, and, and defeat, or the Five of Swords, is a card of, of definite conflict. It's often conflict that's pointed at you, or it can also be about you pointing conflict at somebody else, you know, but it's, it's, it's very active, very much about the idea of actively pursuing conflict to inflict pain, to um, inflict suffering. So I kind of feel that you know, it's a, bit of a very deeply soupy time of a lot of conflict, both within yourself, but also that's been pointed at you. Coming down here to Lust and the Three of Discs. Now, I feel that in order to, um, to, to address this situation that's happened, I, I think there's a, there's a few things here that really need to be put into perspective. You know, I kind of felt that there was support that was needed. And I, I come back to this idea about friends and family, uh, maybe colleagues that can give you support. It's also really important to be grounded and, and you know, for people to be looking on and, and, and looking on over your shoulder in a way where they've got your back. You know, it's, 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 it's support is really important if you're going to go into this, um, I guess, this this idea of, of, of looking to get some sort of balanced outcome that addresses what it is that's happened. And once again, you know, I felt that this was, was very much a judicial or or tribunal or, or, or social scenario that gave you vindication. Um, this would bring up a lot of feeling as well. You know, last is all about, you know, strong emotions, strong feelings, strong instincts that arise within us, within, within ourselves. And what's really important about strengths is, is, is to, in order to refine the situation and to rise up o o over what it is that's happened, it's very important to control whatever it is that gets you know, but whatever button gets pressed within you, um, that would help you to, uh, you know, like rise up and to be better than what it is that's actually happened to you and to stay grounded. If you're the three of this is a card of foundations. It's about being very grounded in what it is that you're actually planning to do in terms of working towards an idea. It's also about an, the idea of support from other people to help you ground this situation or to help you also to learn um, or to learn about what's going on. So it could be, you know, not just support from other people, but it also could be professional help, you know, needing uh, a professional person to, to have your back so that you get the best out of the situation so that it remains grounded. But there's, there, for me, there was money involved here for some of you. I really did feel there was some compensation situation that, that would really give you a reward, but that you needed somebody to have your back. Um, and it's not just about friends and family. If it's going into a professional setting where, you know, you're, you're, you're looking to get some sort of level of compensation, you really need somebody to have your back on a professional level. So that could be a solicitor or some kind of legal uh, advice or some kind of counselling or, or counsellor that gave you some professional input to get the best out of this situation. But for me... I felt that this was, this was a definite yes, that you should go ahead with this and that you could rise up above it by controlling yourself in terms of how you respond to this situation because it will dredge up a lot, but that you needed support to get through this. 
And that if you were looking for compensation, there was definitely compensation there. I, you know, if you're not looking for compensation, if you're not looking to get anything out of this, it's definitely about putting things into perspective and putting them out into the open so that, you know, you have witness to what it is that, 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 that has happened. You know, I feel that this situation needs balance by, um, you know, things being brought into light, being brought into balance through, um, you know, the, the, these new perspectives or this new evidence. Uh, it, it, it needs to come to light in a way where people have witness to that. I hope this reading has made some sense. And if it has, please feel free to leave some comments down below. Uh, it'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon, that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. If you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. And just on a final note, I release videos each and every week to YouTube, so feel free to browse the ones that I've already posted and keep an eye out on the horizon for those that are up and coming. Thanks very much and take care.